Right, hey there, I'm Chief Meteorologist Jason Smith as we're tracking what's going on with Hurricane Helene. This is likely going to be a terrible hurricane for Florida's Bend region and the central and eastern sections of the Florida Panhandle as well as the Florida Peninsula and on up into Georgia and South Carolina. This is a large hurricane. The latest update from the National Hurricane Center has a tropical storm force wind extending out 345 miles from the center. So it is large in size and that's why it's going to have a bigger impact than the average Average hurricane, and this could be a major hurricane. So not only is it large, but it also could be quite uh, big and, uh, and intense. So let's track it. I'm going to bring up some of the here first and show you what's going on with Helene here this evening. Went as a Category One storm, it winds at 85 and down to 974. As the pressure goes down, the winds typically go up, and it's right off the tip of the Yucatan, and it's about to cross the Gulf Loop current with an environment that's very favorable for strengthening, not just in the Gulf water, but also aloft with an upper trough swinging in, boost, and a light wind shear environment. Uh, we are in storm tracker alert mode, hurricane in the Gulf. And it will come close to the area. It may not hit us, but we could see some tropical storm conditions Thursday and Thursday night. I expect a high rip of Thursday and Friday, and the beach forecast reflects that. We're going to see current danger uh, tomorrow and Friday, so swimming is not advised at all. These big swells are coming in. It may be a little better by Saturday. The overall impacts with Helene. Yeah, we're this thing to work its way into the Florida Big Bend region. The official forecast cone from the National Hurricane Center is somewhere from Panama City over to just past St. Mark's, Florida. And then there are going to be big wind impacts away from the center. So if you see the purple coloration, it's not in the cone. It extends beyond the cone. There's a portion of it that's cone, but there's also a portion of it that's not in the cone, and that is the Florida Peninsula, all about Tampa, could see even hurricane conditions with the field being so very large. And so that's going to cause big problems there. We're northerly side of this thing. We're going to have a north wind, and that's really going to make formal impacts here, although we do have that rip current situation going out. Looking at the storm right now, what is it doing? Uh, How is it mechanically right now? Well, uh, we do see, uh, we have seen there late in the evening kind of a cloud-filled eye. It is still a cloud-filled eye at this point. The eye wall does show up on radar. And looking at on satellite imagery right now, we're seeing a deep to convection on the southern flank of this system. The upper level outflow is showing uh, what we would see in a classic strengthening situation, and it is a large cloud canopy that works with this storm too so it is sizable in nature there's not a lot to slow this thing down there's a little drier air in the northwestern gulf we can start to that trough digging in down around houston texas that is steer it a little more north northeasterly and not bringing it north or straight to the northwest towards our part of the gulf coast this is the thin viewing area we stretch from Pascagoula, Mississippi, over to about Florida, and inland up to about Evergreen, Alabama, and uh, Chad Leaksville. So we're not included in the high impact portion of the storm based on the forecast, which is pretty high confidence forecast, computer clustered to our east. The track of the storm will move up the Gulf loop current, and I'll try and highlight that for you so that you can see, you know, if you're looking at a a smartphone if you're watching this on a smartphone you may not be able to see these temperature contour lines but they little tongue a very warm water right here and it really extends out right there where you have that darker coloration and the water's a little here we have higher oceanic heat content in this region compared to other parts of the gulf and uh, that could be a real aiding and intensification and the area that is highlighted here in uh, purple, or I say in red, uh, right here near Tallahassee, that is hurricane warnings. So there are hurricane warnings up. They do not in our area. This is all the hurricane warned area here, southern Georgia, up into central Georgia, and all along the coast. You got this island and over towards the Panacea, and then back around the Sarks and a hurricane warning. 
The closest county to us under an advisory Walton County is in a tropical storm warning and we have tropical warnings up for the coastal waters off of our beaches. We're just not in, in the worn part of it because we're on the west side. It is an 8 mile per hour category 1 pressure 974. It's moving north at and it's located about 430 miles southwest of Tampa. Here's the official track from the National Hurricane Center and it shows the intensity forecast as a category 4 storm by tomorrow and this will be a large so it could have a much bigger impact than an average category 4 to 4. And it, you know that this is the likely scenario. The model all are hinting at rapid intensification tonight and tomorrow. So we'll see how strong this thing gets. Hopefully the models are wrong, but the intensity model suggesting a major hurricane. The potential for storms is high. We don't expect tides above normal more than about a foot above normal in our local area. But if we zoom in on App Bay, this is like a bowl. It's like a pocket. And so the water, the shelf waters are relatively shallow here. It's optimal to produce storm surge in this region here. It is a very sparsely populated section of coast where this may come initially. There's a, a pretty good sized town of Perry, Florida, just up the road. We don't see this thing uh, affecting if it, move, if it moves ashore according to the current track, areas where there are a lot of uh, beach houses and condominiums normally see at a Gulf Beach. Really from Horseshoe Beach all the way back around you get to St. George's Island, there's the, the population density is lower immediate coast, but the, the threat of surge 15 to 20 feet could be inland. So this is a definitely a, a potentially devastating situation there. Expecting wind impacts to reach up into Georgia with significant catastrophic hurricane force winds. Uh, the wind, field, the hurricane force wind field in red extends north of Albany, Georgia, includes uh, areas around Dothan and uh, Appalachicola, Cedar Key, and then we could get some tropical storm conditions tomorrow with the rain bands, especially in Santa Rosa and Okaloosa County, mostly breezy northerly winds for us. This graph mass is a little bit to the east of a lot of the global models, but it's within the cone. And you can depiction here, most of the significant rain bands are going to be just to the east area. However, the outer bands will affect Okaloosa and Santa Rosa County. So rain chance is a lot higher there. This thing's going to punch up into Georgia and then get absorbed into a low pressure area that's non-tropical in nature. It's the upper steering it. So it gets absorbed and it's going to create a lot of rain up into the mid-south before it falls apart and we, we could get some significant flooding in the Appalachians. We're in storm alert mode because of that rip current danger locally and also the fact we've got a hurricane in our backyard in the Gulf crossing the Gulf. By Friday, we may be able to drop that alert early. We'll see how the rip current situation going. Daytime highs tomorrow will be in the low 80s with a northerly wind at Reezy. We'll be down in the mid 60s tomorrow night and mid 60s again Friday night. Comfortable weather on the backside of Helene for us, but definitely a danger storm for folks in Florida. And we're talking about the Big Bend area. And uh, really from Defuniac Springs eastward, it's not going to portion of the panhandle that we cover, which is Okaloosa, Santa Rosa, Escambia. But once you get over closer to Tallahassee, this could be a real bad storm. And one of the things that's alarming to me about it is it's fast mover. It's moving fast now and it's gonna pick up forward and it's likely going to rapidly intensify. Not a good situation, not a lot of time to prepare. We will see an uptick in evacuation traffic. We've already seen the Interstate 10. That'll be happening through the night and into the morning hours tomorrow. Head of Helene, we'll have complete coverage on Fox 10 News tonight and again in the morning on our morning show. Thanks for joining us for this detailed update.